want to welcome to Minor Incidents covering Major Crime Season 6, Episode 6, entitled Conspiracy Theory, Part 1. This episode was directed by Adam Belanoff and written by Stacey K. Black. Moving on up from that makeup trailer, girl, you go ahead. You go ahead. She's directed other episodes before. She has one coming up this season, too, and she directed some for the closer as well, so... You go ahead, girl. You know how this goes. We're going to do the case first and then the personal front. The case is that a high-profile lawyer is found dead in her car late at night. She is, like, super high-profile. Think Gloria Aldred. She's known for taking on cases of women who were treated unfairly in the workplace. Major crimes go to her place of work to inform her family. Her son works with her. And they're also having this big case that's going on where people from like a Hooters-esque kind of club are saying that they were fired when they became 30. It was in their contract and they, was la they were labeled as models on their agreements but not for tax purposes. It's super shady, put it that way. They didn't want to release the information to the public yet that the lawyer was dead. The son decided he's gonna like, it's gonna be like his, it's his time to shine. He's gonna go out and tell everyone about this, about his mother being dead. So he does it, not a shed of sorrow or anything. He's just like, whatever. The thing that they found interesting was that her pearls weren't real. It doesn't look like a robbery. It doesn't look like anything, you know, crazy, but she was like known for wearing these pearls. The owner of this restaurant is apparently like an old school uh, football player who decided to, when he retired, go into the bar business. And they have a grand opening for this restaurant and like Rick Fox makes an appearance, he used to play for the Lakers. On the personal front, we have Wes who's like kind of flirting with Camilla. First he went in to flirt with these, the girls that are suing the like owner of this restaurant. Went to flirt with them and it sounds like something happened more so than just, I was going to say unsportsmanlike conduct. It seems like there might be a little more to that. She seems very reserved and very, like something else happened besides just like a light tap on the butt. Like it was, that something else happened. Obviously we're going to find out about that in the upcoming episodes. This is the first episode of a four-parter and then we have another four-parter after this one. I kept thinking this was it. I'm not really sure why, but we have another four-parter happening. So that should be interesting. We had some really cute remarks with Andy <laughs> talking about these women and then Sharon sitting right there and Sharon like turns slowly to look at him and he's like, they're not as lovely as my wife, of course. <laughs> there wasn't much. And that's the only bad thing about these episodes is that yes, you get four episodes in a particular storyline, but you're getting only a portion of the story as well. You're getting a, a portion of the personal storylines as well, which kind of is a downer. I would have liked actual episodes. You get what you get, you don't get upset. What I like about this episode, I liked that it's a new story. I like that they're bringing in a little more humor with this one. They had a few pretty funny moments. There's a lot of people who wanted this woman dead. <laughs> So it should be very interesting who it actually could be. There's there's like her ex-husband who she owes a shit ton of alimony to. So we're, he's kind of off the table because if she's dead, he can't pay her alimony or she can't pay him alimony. So that's like, he's not going to kill her. Then we have the guy who she's suing, but he has kind of made his case like she actually brought in business for him. Like it, it was a win for her, a win for him because it opened people's eyes up to his business and stuff like that. Even if it's bad press, it's still press. That kind of thing. We have this guy who was stalking her because she got him fired from a directing job when he like stripped naked to tell this woman to like show her breasts in the in this movie. It was a, there was a whole scene and like he was ridiculous and hilariously so ridiculous. We ha even have her son on the table because he really wanted to make his case and like. It sounds like he tried to cut a deal with the football player dude. So I don't know, so that should get really interesting because then that puts football dude back on the table. So who knows? Who knows where this can go? Usually I can call it, but I'm not really sure yet. I don't think we've met the person who killed her yet. But it was all around a pretty good episode. It was, it was humorous, but also dramatic when it needed to be. And there was also still some comments like, oh, you should be at home to Sharon and stuff like that. So because there wasn't anything explicitly like bad this episode with where she was concerned but she only had like she didn't have many lines this episode either i don't know what's going on with that like 
give us something. We have this conversation every single episode, it seems, especially this season, and like, give us something. There was a nice scene with Sharon and Rusty where they talked about, because Rusty has broken up with Gus, finally, and like, has come to his senses, and Gus cheated on him, and like, it was a whole thing. But obviously Gus still has feelings for him because he said, um, he went to the guy's place of work, restaurant owner's restaurant, and he told him, like, you're either going to give him two weeks pay, and like, give him a recommendation, or we're gonna take this to court and he'll sue you. It's illegal to fire somebody if they don't do what you want them to do based solely on a sexual premise. I just wish we could get away from Rusty and Gus, but obviously we won't be. Rusty's just brand new and figuring out who he actually is, being vocal about it to other people, coming into his own, and you gave him one boyfriend in the entire series. Like, obviously, first few seasons, he was just figuring out that he actually was gay. He knew he was gay, he just couldn't, couldn't didn't feel like he could tell anybody that he was gay. Got the past few where he's actually dating someone, but, like, nothing happens with it. And everybody was surprised when it happened anyway. Myself included. Everyone was surprised. I was like, wait, what? They're in a, oh, that's nice. And it's not even, it's not because it's a gay relationship. I'm all for gay relationships. For, I'll be the first one to sign up for Rusty to be in another relationship. Just not with Gus. Give him somebody else. That was also a dislike. There wasn't many dislikes except for that one. Also that Sharon hardly had any lines. Hopefully she gets more in the next few episodes. Ratings, I actually really liked it. I'm gonna give it a nine. Only thing is I wish we would have had no Gus, or Rusty talking about Gus, and I wish we would have had more Sharon, obviously. Or something Sharon and Andy besides one off comment. Not as lovely as my wife. I don't think we'll get anything of them. They already had their wedding. I really don't think we're gonna get anything of Sharon and Andy for like the rest of the series, and that sucks. Uh, predictions, I already gave a prediction. They're gonna end up killing Sharon off in, at the end of the series. Obviously we have to, f they're gonna go into this a little deeper. The son isn't as much of a feminist as his mother was. He's actually quite the opposite, it seems. I think something's gonna come up with that pink bottle. There was a pink water bottle. You might not have even noticed it. But in the clips that they showed of, of the son with the mother at these press conferences, he's holding this pink bottle, like, very awkwardly. Like, I can't describe it. It sounds weird. But I feel like they're gonna talk about this pink bottle because they wouldn't have put it in these things without... I feel like it's missing because they haven't talked about it, they haven't seen it anywhere. Someone's gonna come up about this pink bottle. Because really, it's anybody's game at this point. I think the one with the most motives so far is between her son and the ex-football star. Especially the ex-football star. No, especially the son. It's between those two. I don't think the ex-husband would do anything. I don't think the guy stalking her would do anything. Because the son is shady. There's something off about that son. I will never trust anybody in a bow tie. Join me next week for Minor Incidents covering Conspiracy Theory Part 2. Sixth season, seventh episode of Major Crimes. I'm kind of into this case. I'm kind of liking this one. It's more humorous than the last one, and I'm all for when they bring humor because they do it so well. Especially if you let Provenza and Flynn be themselves and like go and be ridiculous. Those are the best episodes you're gonna have. We haven't had any in the past few episodes and or past few seasons, I should say, and that sucks. So I really wish we got more of that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. You never know. picture and now I'm like I remember why I liked filming like this because <laughs> I don't have I don't have a camera stand I just use whatever I can when I'm over in my corner over there that's where I was looking in my corner and uh it's not this so there's a weather guy here uh in the Philly area I live in Delaware but like there's a guy in the Philly area that he's known for wearing a bow tie and like they made a whole campaign when they were trying to like talk about the network or whatever about like you, you gotta trust a man about him like no you don't ever trust a man a bow tie because it looks fucking ridiculous you know who wears bow ties clowns clowns wear bow ties